Hello, my name is Dr. Diwan S. Raja. Today I will discuss about the anatomy of the male urethra. The male urethra is about 18 to 22 centimeter in length. So from here to here it is around 18 to 22 centimeter and it conveys urine from the internal urethral orifice that is located at the base of the bladder to the to the tip of the glans penis at the tip of the navicular fossa here that is the external urethral orifice it also provides an exit for semen during ejaculation in flaccid state of penis it is double curvature It has four parts, the intramural part. This is the intramural part. Our pre-prosthetic part, this is the prostate gland, and this is the intramural part. Intermediate part, this is the intermediate part or membranous part. And spongy part is here, that is also called penile urethra. Okay, so we got that. Now we we'll go to the prosthetic part of the urethra. A lot of complaint about that. Prosthetic part of the urethra has urethral crest and bilateral prosthetic sinus. This is the urethral crest, and this space are the prosthetic sinuses. So these are sinuses. This is the crest. Okay, seminal colliculus is a rounded eminence in the urethral crest. This part is the seminal colliculus. Prosthetic utricle is, a, is in the seminal colliculus, is a caldi sac. Prosthetic utricle embryologically represents the uterus or uterovaginal canal, this part. The ejaculatory duct opens into the prosthetic part of the urethra adjacent to the prosthetic utricle. So, even sometimes inside the prosthetic utricle. These are the opening of the ejaculatory duct. Ejaculatory ducts are formed by the union of the ampulla of the vas deferens and the duct of the seminal vesicle. Okay, the pre-prosthetic part of the urethra is surrounded by internal urethral sphincter. So here we will get internal urethral sphincter. Prosthetic part of the urethra is the most dilatable part. Membranous part and the external urethral orifice are least. This is the external urethral orifice. This is the membranous part that passes through the deep perineal pouch and it penetrates the perineal membrane okay and will get the external urethral sphincter around the urethra here in, around the membranous urethra here spongy part is the longest and mobile part bulbo urethral gland open into the bulbous part this is the bulbo urethral gland these are act as an accessory organ of reproduction it lubricate the glans penis area, the urethral area. So this is the bulbourethral gland. It opens here into the bulbous part. We have a lot of urethral gland that opens into the lacuni, lacuni that opens by means of the lacuni to the urethra. What is the blood supply of the urethra? Inferior vesical artery, middle rectal artery, dorsal artery of the penis. Venous drainage go to the prosthetic plexus. Lymphatic drainage pass to the internal and external iliac lymph node. Nerve, multiple nerve supply. Prosthetic plexus, inferior hypogastric plexus. We have the 
autonomic nerves like sympathetic and parasympathetic all contribute in the prostatic plexus so we look at the prostate gland again this is the formation of the ejaculatory duct that opens into the prostatic part of the urethra by the side of the utricle utricle represents the embryonic uterovaginal canal the ejaculatory duct is formed by the union of the duct of seminal vesicle and the ampoule of the ductus deferens. Ejaculatory duct opens into the prostatic part of the urethra. Okay, so this is the external urethral sphincter. This part is the membranous urethra. This is more vulnerable to injury because it is least dilatable part. Another least dilatable part is the external urethral meatus. We got the nerve supply, okay, blood supply. Now, clinical note, urethra may be ruptured in any type of injury or trauma. Then there will be extra position of urine. Membranous part of the urethra is the most vulnerable to get injury. Enlarged prostate, very common, after the age of 55 may obstruct the flow of the urine because the urethra goes through the prostate. If the prostate gland enlarges, it will obstruct the passage of urine. Stricture of urethra due to some type of gonococcal infection or chlamydial infection, urethra may be fibrous stricture. Initially, there is pus and that pus will, will be thickened and eventually sticker, eventually stricture formation. Hypospadias congenital bar defect. The urethra cannot go to the navicular fossa in most cases. It is opening on the under surface of the penis. Epispadias are more rare than that of this. It is, it is more rare. Epispadias opening of the urethra on the upper surface of the of the Penis. And clinical note, you must know that catheterization, it should be done aseptically. There are a lot of indication for catheterization. Suppose retention of urine before some type of surgery. Okay, we need catheterization. In catheterization, the penis band should be made one. So it is folded up and then the catheter should go through. So that the two bands will be one band. The band between the root of the penis and the spongy part of the penis will be, will be, will be altered due to holding the penis by hand up. Okay, so that one band. That will help in catheterization. Okay, and that's all about the anatomy of the male urethra. If you have any question, please feel free to ask me. Please share the information with your friends and please support my channel. Please subscribe me and have a nice day. Bye now.